Okay, good morning. Um, thought it was about time I did a little update on how this whole system works. So, originally when I designed it, I wanted to make a greenhouse that uh, would be able to be used in the wintertime and not lose all kinds of power, or at least have enough power so it didn't cost a lot to, to grow what I wanted to grow. Now, um, the original plan was for a regular greenhouse, and then after looking online at all kinds of greenhouses, I <clears throat> stumbled across aquaponics and decided that that was the better way to go, because I didn't really like the idea of hydroponics, because it's just too much buying chemicals all the time. So, anyway, I ended up going with that with, after a lot of research and uh, trying to make it fit in a building that I could build with the materials I had left over from tearing down the fire station. So, um, this is what I ended up with. So, to start off with, I wanted a building um, that would rotate and follow the sun so that I would only have, one, have to have glass on one side and therefore have much less heat losses. And so, I set upon doing that and this, uh, it sits on a, a central bearing and the whole building turns on that. Um, so, that bearing is right here. So, this great big uh, tapered roller bearing and the, the race that it sits in. So, this sits on the frame that's mounted in the concrete on the floor down below and the, there's a reservoir around it that allows oil to sit in it. And then, this bearing sits on a piece of pipe that's welded on the bottom half inch thick wall pipe that sits on the bottom of the main frame for the greenhouse itself and then the whole thing can turn around and follow the sun. These little guys right here are uh, just stop switches and as the building turns around it hits these uh, little stops or, uh, so that it triggers the shuts off the motor so it won't turn anymore in that direction and then next day when it turns back around it comes all the way around until it hits this side and I made them adjustable with this slot so I can slide them back and forth for uh, the difference between winter and summer and how far it has to turn so you have that and then if we start I guess we might as well start at the pump. The pump is just a little uh, Aquaflow Circmaster uh, 115 horsepower pump. It pumps out of this reservoir and up this pipe and through here and then it goes through a check valve and gets pushed into the bottom of this fluidized sand bed filter which has a pipe that runs the length of the bottom of it with holes in it and it just forces the sand to stay turbulent in the water and that gives it lots of room for the microbes to convert the ammonia from the fish to uh, nitrites and then nitrates and then as it gets up here it flows out of the top of the tank and over and drops into the fish tank which down in the bottom there's a manifold that matches the sloped bottom of the tank there are holes in that that create a nice flow across the bottom and keep it swept pretty clean and then it gets picked up by that, I don't know if you can see it or not, that little gray tube that comes down in the bottom um, and it picks up all the poop and then for, that's part of the water, just a little bit of water and the poop and then the rest of the water gets picked up in this upper drain pipe that comes back around and out the side over here and then the 
The one that's picking up the poop off the bottom goes into this radial flow separator and then overflows into this tank that all the rest of the uh, water flow comes out of the top of the fish tank into there also. And then it, that's a, this little well is my, I just made a little well for a uh, domestic water heater element that heats the greenhouse when it's not warm enough outside. So anyway, the water drains out of that and goes back down, follows the lower pipe there and comes over and goes into all of the old oil drums that are converted into grow tanks. So here's one of them. One of the tanks right here that I opened up so you can see in the bottom I have a hose that has a bunch of little needle holes in it and when the blower's on that creates a, a lot of bubbles in there and it, the air all gets fed by a manifold up here that runs the length of the greenhouse and has a drop for every tank for air. And that, that all goes back over here and goes into this ring blower or radial regenerative blower. That provides all the air for the fish tanks and the grow tanks. And let's see, what else we have? Uh, the controllers are over here. It's, uh, what is it today? Well, it's right about where it's supposed to be, 70 degrees. Um, this controller can, has a sensor up top of the solar panels that controls the tilt on the horizontal axis. Well, actually, I have to... Right. And then this one controls the building turning around to face the sun on the, in the vertical axis. So that's all powered by a 12 volt battery because the controllers are 12 volt and the winch motor that drives the uh, wheel that turns the unit around is also 12 volts. So that was a cheap way for me to do it. Now, uh, the latest thing I've done is the automatic feeders which are basically just soda bottles that sit on a, a piece of half inch PVC pipe into a T and inside that, down in that T, the pipe each, under each of the bottles there's a small uh, recess in the top of the pipe. It doesn't go all the way in, it's just, just a little recess that can hold about 10 pellets and the pipe runs, see it right here, the pipe runs the length of the building or the length of the two fish tanks and is uh, turned by this little synchronous motor that I salvaged out of a holiday decoration thing and that's controlled by a timer that turns it on and feeds the fish three times a day. So uh, I have four feeders because I'm planning on putting a little divider down between the two fish tanks ultimately so that I can have the different age classes or, or different species of fish in four different sections. So, and the lighting is all LEDs. There's 200 watts per, six, per tank. Um, they're on for Either they or the sun is on for 16 hours a day this time of year. Some nice blossoms on the tomatoes. Beans. Pepper plant back in there. Some new lettuce plants. Some beets. More lettuce. Arugula bok choy, uh, wild lettuce, one roll of wild lettuce there, and we've got uh, broccoli and turnips, and more lettuce, and some rainbow Swiss chard there, 
uh, some mint, more Swiss chard, lettuce, and tomatoes, and strawberry plants down there, some more strawberry plants over here, um, some, oh, what are those greens, uh, endive, I think my daughter told me when she was down here the other day. Butternut squash over there. You can see the little butternut squash forming. Growing up those pieces of rope. Another butternut squash. Some, <coughs> excuse me. Some beans. And these are the cleats for the ropes that control all of the lights. The lights are all go up and down as far as I want them. And then uh, this panel we're looking at in the background there is the two and a half inch insulation panel that is controlled by this uh, little lineal actuator with a pulley on the end of it. And that turns this that shaft, that piece of EMT conduit that has, sits in bearings and has straps that go down and connect to the insulated door in several places. And, uh, so, let's see. Oh, yeah, there's a cucumber plant back in there, too. That's blooming away. Put uh, some just some black plastic that I can just take down. Keeps the sun off the fish tanks during the day, so they don't get too much algae growing on them. But I have a, right now, I haven't got the automatic uh, solar sensor up yet and to control this. But right now, this switch just controls that lineal actuator to let that panel back down, so we'll let a little light in here. Not exactly full sunlight today. I thought I'd show you what that panel does. So that's the deal. You can see how thick that foam is. It does a pretty nice job of sealing it up. As you can see, there's very little condensation on the windows. A um, little bit on the end ones because I get a little leakage around on the weather stripping that goes around the edges. but. Not bad for a 30 foot by 4 foot insulation, insulated door. So, let's see, what am I forgetting? Um, these guys. like the camera. Come right over and take a look at it. So they've grown quite a bit. When I first put them in here, they were about the size of uh, about an inch to an inch and a half long, maybe. Now they're, most of them are well, a bunch of them are three or four inches long. That's only been a couple months, three months maybe. I've got some yellow cat.